Pay close attention. What you're about to see is Bible prophecy being fulfilled. Welcome to another edition of YPN News, bringing you the news that relates to Bible prophecy and foretold by Yeshua Hawkins. Katan, we have a lot of news articles to discuss today with our viewers, but first we're going to go directly to our field correspondent, Larry McGee, who has three of the most recent shootings that he's covering, and we know that still this is only a fraction of the shootings taking place across the country at this time. Right. Larry, what do you have for us? The momentum of malice is continuing, Jeff, and no category of people seems to be untouched. As with star prosecutors who were once considered off limits, so with children who were once considered innocent. And as with the innocent children, so with the lawyers who often persecute the innocent. This week, three tragic stories demonstrating exactly that fact for our first a veteran prosecutor, Mark Hassey, was on his way to work this week when he was approached by mass gunmen and shot down outside of the Kaufman County Courthouse located just southeast of Dallas. The motive at this point is uncertain, but investigators are looking at Hassey's cases, which have included drug dealers and organized crime. Murders of prosecutors are very rare in the U.S., but as a sign of the worsening times, Hassey was shot multiple times just a block away from the courthouse. Police are pursuing one or possibly two suspects, which witnesses say were dressed in all black. Kaufman County Judge Bruce Wood offered remorse concerning Hassey, saying that he was not only an outstanding person, but he was also a very well-known and respected prosecutor for the district attorney's office. Investigators described the attack as targeted, and Judge Wood went on to say that, what it, that whenever prosecutors are murdered like this, it takes things to the next level a retaliatory sentiment which was also echoed by District Attorney Mark McCullen, who too seemed eager for his pound of flesh. There have been only seven prosecutors murdered in the U.S. between the 1960s and 2004. $20,000 is being offered for information concerning the incident. In Chicago, Mayor Rahm Emanuel has ordered an increased police presence in some of that city's most violent neighborhoods. In just one night this week, there were seven shootings, but it was the murder of a 15-year-old girl just a mile away from President Obama's home that sparked the latest crackdown. Hadia Pendleton was shot in the back on Tuesday as she and some of her friends gathered at a park on the way home from school. Police say the attack was targeted and carried out by a gunman who mistook them for gang members. A close friend of the family, however, and policeman himself, Damon Stewart, believes that it was simply a matter of being at the wrong place at the wrong time. To address the violence, a plan was announced this week to shift 200 officers from desk jobs to street duty in order to flood gang-infested areas with law enforcement. The mayor expressed grief for Hadia and urged the city to unify to protect its greatest resource, its children. But earlier this month, Mayor Emanuel admitted that it will take more than just flooding the streets of Chicago with law enforcement to stem the tide of the killing. Hadia Pendleton, the latest victim of that tie to receive popular attention, was a very promising young lady. She was opposed to gangs, and as early as the sixth grade, she produced a video encouraging her peers to do the same. Policeman Stewart says she appeared to be on the track to great things. The mayor has asked the community for help in solving her murder, and while police have received a number of tips, they have yet to make an arrest in the case. There was yet another shooting incident involving legal officials this week. Three people were shot. One of them was killed. Another is listed in extremely critical condition, and the third received non-threatening injuries. One of the victims is attorney Mark Hummels, who was representing a client when he was shot. 
He is currently being treated at John C. Lincoln Hospital, where he is being identified as a no information patient, which simply means that either police or the family have asked the hospital not to release information concerning his condition. Six people were taken to the hospital in total. Three were shot and the others were suffering from anxiety related to the shooting. Details concerning the case, just like the violence all across the country, is still unfolding. For YPN News, I'm Larry McGee. Katan Jeff, back to you. The violence is really increasing, Larry. Now, another disturbing event unfolding this week as a kindergarten student remains a hostage in an underground bunker in Midland City, Alabama. The suspect, 65-year-old Jimmy Lee Dykes, stormed onto a school bus, fatally shooting the bus driver, Mr. Charles Poland, as he tried to hold back the gunman while 21 children escaped out of the back of the bus. The gunman grabbed two children, but one managed to break free. The kidnapped boy, only five years old, has now been identified as Ethan. Hostage negotiators have been communicating with Mr. Dykes through a 4-inch PVC pipe that runs down into the bunker where Dykes remains with his 5-year-old captive. The 6x8 bunker has both electricity and supplies. Police were able to deliver food and medication to the boy who has special needs. Now, while there is no indication that the boy himself has been physically harmed, the mother has been described as hanging on by a thread. Yeah, I can only imagine. Mr. Dykes has had a recent string of disturbing events. Six months ago, he reportedly beat a neighbor's dog to death and terrorized other neighbors. A warrant filed last month accused Dykes of shooting at a man after he reportedly told Mr. Dykes that he needed to calm down. Rhonda Wilbers, a neighbor, said, This guy is an accident waiting to happen. This guy is going to snap. Now, from super confusion to super bugs, we are now learning this new strain of norovirus, which makes people violently ill, could be particularly vicious. Mm. Now, first identified in Australia, it's now spreading across the country. In an average year, about 21 million, and that's right, 21 million Americans will get the norovirus. Of those that get it, 800 will die. Amazing. Symptoms include stomach sickness, which can come on very suddenly, even within hours of being exposed. With no one having immunity to this new strain, as many as 50% more of us could fall ill. Now, compared to the flu, uh, flu is sp uh, normally spread mostly in the air by coughs and sneezes. A person needs to breathe in as many as 1,000 particles of the flu virus. Now, with this norovirus, just 18 particles can do it. It can make you sick, and it, of course, is extremely contagious. Now, that means if a person touches the same spot that someone with the norovirus touched two weeks ago, the virus is now on their hands. That's right, on hard surfaces, revolving doors, door handles, coffee makers. Regular flu virus can last two to eight hour, hours, but the norovirus can be there and infectious for weeks. Mm. Regular detergents don't work against norovirus. You have to use bleach, uh, which of course is a live product. Uh, you need to get norovirus off your hands before it gets into your stomach by washing your hands frequently and wiping store products down with disinfectants. Now, in other news, there has been an explosion in Ankara, Turkey's capital, just outside the U.S. Embassy. There has been no official press release at this point, and what we've learned so far is that a suicide bomber struck the embassy. Now, the explosion happened in front of one of the gates for the visa applications. One person has been confirmed dead until now, but many others were transported to the local hospitals. Continuing in and around the Great River Euphrates, Syria claims that Israel has carried out a deadly bombing raid on its territory destroying a military research center near Damascus. Israel denies these claims, but if confirmed, it'll be the first time in decades that Israel has launched an attack on another state, not in response to military action. So far, Israel and most international powers are keeping silent on the matter, which has sparked condemnation from Russia. Moscow has commented on the matter, saying that the strike was unprovoked and is a strike on the sovereign state, and that, they say, is in violation of international law and is therefore unacceptable. According to Syrian resources, two site workers were killed in the bombing. 
Now, there are also report, some reports suggesting that Israeli fighters also bombed a convoy of weapons that were making their way from Syria to Lebanon, alleged, allegedly to arm Hezbollah, which, of course, the Syrians have also denied. According to an American official, Tel Aviv, Tel Aviv had informed Washington that it was planning on an attack in, inside of Syria. Now, some think these actions will consolidate fighters in Syria to come together to fight against Israel. Again, Israel has declined to comment on the matter. And back to the United States. In Georgia, a rare winter tornado touched down. According to witnesses, for 20 minutes, the twister wreaked havoc, turning over cars and semis, tearing to pieces houses, office building, and sending debris hurtling through the air. Now, scientists think it was an EF2 or greater with wind speeds more than 125 miles per hour. One person, of course, is reported dead. Now, in its wake, streets and highways look like junkyards with over 100 cars flipped and strewn across the, ro the roadways. Now, one truck driver was in his truck when it was overturned by the tornado's violent winds. Recently in our nation's capital, Mark Mattioli, one of the fathers of the victims of the school shooting that took place two months ago in Newtown, Connecticut, addressed Congress concerning solutions to gun violence. He stated the solutions to deal with gun violence is not as complex as others have been told. And although the solution might not be as simple to implement, it's a simple concept. He continued that we need civility across our nation and that the shooting at the school were just symptoms of a bigger problem and the problem is not gun loss. He went on to give one example of how the violence on television and movies when he was a child pales in comparison to the violence on television today. He gave an example of how when he was young he stole a pack of gum from a store and his mother when she found out took him back to the store, made him give the pack of gum back to the store clerk, and made him apologize. Mr. Mattioli continued saying, we as parents are the ones responsible for cultivating, and these are his words, cultivating character in our children. And although we look to the schools to help us in this, it's our primary responsibility as parents. He's right, it starts mm -hmm. at home. Now more complex laws aren't needed, he cited that Chicago has some of the toughest gun laws on the books, but those laws did not protect the 500 or so people that were murdered last year in that city alone. Now, he finished up by saying that we need to hold people accountable for their actions and enforce the laws that are already in existence instead of enacting more new laws. Now, as we close out this news segment, North Korea is back in the news again with continued threats that they will soon test a nuclear weapon and a long-range rocket aimed directly at, you guessed it, United States of America. As we've recently reported, North Korea's missiles can reach Hawaii, but they haven't been able to make a nuclear warhead small enough to fit atop a missile. Now, Defense Secretary Leon Panetta said that the U.S. is ready to meet any provocation. North Korea also threatened South Korea, saying that there will be consequences if they take place in backing the U.S. in sanctions against North Korea. North Korea has reportedly turned its back on restarting six-party talks and appears to be uh, following in his father's footsteps. China, one of North Korea's allies, has urged them to go back to the negotiating table and has said that it will reduce food aid to North Korea if it carries out another test. Now, of course, hopes are looming that this will motivate North Korea to withhold future tests. Of course, time will tell. Well, don't forget to order your copies of the latest Prophetic Word magazine and monthly newsletter. You can contact the House of Yahweh by writing them at the House of Yahweh P.O. Box 2498, Abilene, Texas 79604. You can call them at 1-800-613-9494 or you can email them at info at Yahweh.com or visit their website at www.yahweh.com or www.yeshawhawkins.com. And for any calls outside the United States, please call the number on your screen. Now, like we've said in the past, don't go anywhere. Press pause if you need to, but don't miss what's coming up next. Israel Hawkins revealing things scholars have been drooling over for centuries to understand, made plain and simple by Anoki who unfolds the truth like no other. 
For all of us here at YPN News, I'm Katana Alexander. And I'm Jeffrey Heimerman. Thank you for watching.